Here are six battery packs I made for my electric longboard. They were each five cell, but I used them in pairs because I need a 10 cell battery pack to power my motor. The reason why I haven't yet made a single 10 cell battery pack is because I don't have a charger that supports it. But in a few weeks I'll have all the parts that I need to make a single 10 cell battery using a BMS. From these six packs only two are still usable. That's because I made these using old used cells and didn't test them accordingly and was forced to take them apart to test each cell correctly. If you want to know the basics about 18650 battery cells and the difference between connecting them in series or parallel, then watch my following video. Most RC chargers support up to 6 cell batteries. Because I needed a 10 cell battery for my electric longboard, I decided to make 5 cell battery packs and use them in pairs. That way I can charge each separately. Here are uh, some of the parts I have used. For connecting the batteries together, you have two choices, soldering or welding. Welding is the best option, but for that you'll need a spot welder and nickel strip. This is also how I'll be making all my battery packs, because using soldering iron could damage the battery cells and make them unusable. As mentioned, I'll be using a nickel strip to weld the batteries together. These come in different sizes. This one, for example, is made to combine it with a battery cell holder. Battery cell holders are very handy because they let you decide what type of formation you want to use and they keep a safe distance between the cells. You'll also need a thick, good quality cable. You'll need to solder these on the nickel strips. Using a flexible cable would be easier. You'll need some type of plug for charging and discharging the battery. I've used the XT90, which has an anti-spark switch, but you can also use a XT60, a T-plug or a banana plug. And very important is a balance lead cable, which helps charging each cell properly, which extends the life of your battery. I've created a separate video about balance lead cables and how to connect them. Link in the description. There are also some extra parts you can use, like a grip for your plug, which makes it easier to grab onto it when unplugging. Or some kind of protection to keep moisture out. Before putting the cells together, you need to test each cell in order to know their capacity. For this, follow my instructions in the following video. Next, you'll need to decide how you want to form your battery pack. You can either glue them using tape or hot glue, or you can use battery cell spacers. The battery cell spacers are better because they leave a small space between each cell, which prevents shortage, but also makes it easier to replace a cell when needed. The only downside is that it adds to the overall format of your battery pack, thus making it bigger. When organizing the cells, place them negative to positive in order to connect them easily. It's also possible to make different shapes with the spacers. Decide for yourself which type of layout fits your purpose. As mentioned before, I'll be using the spot welder to connect the batteries. If you want to use a soldering iron, I suggest you use a good one which supports a high temperature. That way you can solder fast without overheating the cells too much. Just make sure you don't keep the iron more than a few seconds on the cells. Next I'll prepare the charging cable, for which I'll use a XT90 plug.
Next I'll connect the balance lead cable. For more information about balance lead cables and how to connect them, watch my previous video. Link in the description. Test the connectivity on the charging cable and the balance lead cable using a voltmeter. In order to charge it, you can use an RC charger like the IMX B6. Choose LiPo as battery type and set it to 5 cell battery. It's also best to choose a low charge rate like 500 milliamp to test your cells for overheating. On my next video I'll show how to make a 10 cell battery pack using a BMS.